It's that time of year again. Time to start thinking about how to take precautions against heat-related illnesses. Administrator Directive 10.64 Extreme Temperature Conditions in the TDCJ and Correctional Managed Healthcare Policy D 27.2 Heat Stress contain information regarding prevention and treatment of heat related illnesses. And the employee information card you carry around includes tips on recognizing, treating, and preventing heat related illnesses in yourself, your fellow staff members, and the offenders you supervise. A person is more likely to develop heat-related illness if they fall into one or more of these categories. They work or exercise outdoors. They are new to the job or newly incarcerated. They have health problems like obesity, cirrhosis, chronic pulmonary disease or COPD, asthma, diabetes, seizure disorders, mental health conditions, heart disease or high blood pressure. They use psychiatric diuretic or other medications, they are over 65 years old, they are outside in a period of high temperature and humidity, or there is no cooling breeze. So let's go over prevention, recognition of symptoms, and how to treat anyone who shows signs of heat-related illness. Here are some preventive tips for you. Drink water often, even if you're not thirsty. You and offenders should maintain an intake of at least 16 ounces of water per hour when the temperature gets over 90 degrees. Remind offenders about the importance of staying hydrated and encourage them to drink plenty of water throughout the day. In extreme conditions, you need to interrupt work every 15 to 20 minutes for a water break and instruct offenders to drink even if they're not thirsty. Electrolyte drinks are available to staff and offenders at the commissary, but be sure to avoid drinks with caffeine as they contribute to dehydration. An important indicator of dehydration may be urine color. As you can see, the very light yellow color at the top means you're hydrated, while the dark brown color at the bottom means you are very dehydrated and need to seek medical attention immediately. Posters with this information are in common areas of your unit. When outside, wear light, loose clothing, and a brimmed hat, and use sunscreen to prevent sunburn. Sunscreen is available at the commissary, and it doesn't count against an offender's spending limit. Cooling towels are also available to you and the offenders from the commissary. Gradually acclimate yourself and those you supervise to conditions which require strenuous outside work in 90 degree or greater heat. Be aware of the weather conditions you'll be working in. The National Weather Service issues hot weather warnings that you need to be aware of. An excessive heat watch means you should be prepared for excessive heat during the next 24 to 72 hours. A heat advisory means that within the next 12 hours, the daytime heat index, which takes into account both the air temperature and the relative humidity, is forecast to meet or exceed 100 degrees during the day and stay above 75 degrees at night. An excessive heat warning means that in the next 12 hours and for the next two days, the maximum daytime heat index temperature is expected to exceed 105 degrees and it will not drop below 75 degrees at night. During periods of extreme heat, unit staff will monitor and announce over the radio the temperature, heat index, and the advisory category once every hour between 12.30 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. There are certain precautions you must take for each advisory category. A Category 1 caution advisory indicates a risk of possible fatigue with prolonged exposure, absent mitigating measures. Staff shall encourage high water intake and look for signs of exhaustion. Staff and offenders are encouraged to utilize respite areas as needed. Offender workers shall be provided with five minute rest breaks every hour. A Category 2 extreme caution advisory indicates a risk of heat related illness with prolonged exposure absent mitigating measures. 
Staff shall encourage high water intake and monitor and seek care for offenders exhibiting signs of illness. Staff and offenders are encouraged to utilize respite areas as needed. Offender workers shall be provided with five minute rest breaks every one half hour and staff shall encourage offenders to lay down with feet up during such breaks. Staff shall also reduce work pace by one third. A Category 3 Danger Advisory indicates that the risk of heat stroke is possible and heat related illness is likely absent mitigating measures. Staff shall encourage high water intake and monitor and seek care for offenders exhibiting signs of illness. Staff and offenders are encouraged to utilize respite areas as needed. Staff shall restrict outside work or reduce work pace by one half to two thirds, provide 10 minute rest breaks every one half hour, and encourage offenders to lay down with feet up during such breaks. Outside work and recreation may be limited or restricted as necessary in accordance with AD 10.64 extreme temperature conditions in the TDCJ. A Category 4 Extreme Danger Advisory indicates a high risk of heat stroke absent mitigating measures. Staff shall encourage high water intake and monitor and seek care for offenders exhibiting signs of illness. Staff and offenders are encouraged to utilize respite areas as needed. Outside work and recreation shall be restricted. If you have to be outdoors, take frequent and regular rest periods in the shade and drink 16 ounces of water every hour, even if you're not thirsty. Use respite areas throughout the day. And remember, you must allow offenders access to these areas upon request. Every unit has at least one designated respite area and you need to know where it is. If you don't, ask your supervisor. You also need to recognize the symptoms of heat-related illness in others so you can report it to medical staff and the unit risk manager immediately. Remember, everyone reacts differently, so people with heat-related illness will not always display all of the symptoms as listed. Heat cramps are usually the first sign your body can't handle the heat and typically occur after strenuous physical activity in a hot environment. Look for heavy perspiration, involuntary muscle spasms, which sometimes begin after hard physical exertion, and pain or cramps in the arms, legs, or abdomen. Heat exhaustion is a common form of heat-related illness, and exposure to high temperatures over several days in a row may increase the risk of heat exhaustion. Look for profuse perspiration with cool, sometimes pale and clammy skin, a normal or below normal body temperature, weakness, dizziness, thirst, and a bad headache, rapid heartbeat and breathing. The person might be anxious, confused, or disoriented. They may suffer from fatigue and nausea and could have a loss of physical coordination. Heat stroke is life-threatening and can be fatal if left untreated. You need to get medical help immediately and be prepared to do rescue breathing or CPR. Look for red, hot, dry skin, a high body temperature, rapid, weak heartbeat, a throbbing headache, mental confusion, dizziness, extreme fatigue, nausea, vomiting, incoherent speech, convulsions or seizures, and unconsciousness. If you see someone with these symptoms, immediately report it to a staff member and seek medical care. Here's what to do if you recognize these symptoms in a coworker or offender. Get medical attention as soon as possible, but while you're waiting, move the person from hot direct sunlight to a cooler environment, air conditioned if possible. Have the person lie down with their legs slightly elevated. Remove or loosen as much clothing as modesty allows. If conscious and alert, have the person drink water or a rehydrating sports drink. Do not give them caffeinated drinks, as these will contribute to further dehydration. Sprinkle or spray them with water and apply cool water or wet cloths to the person's neck, armpits, and groin. Fan the person if there is no breeze. And remember, all of this information is on your employee information card. Now, 
Let's go over a list of hot weather precautions scheduled for implementation from May 1st through October 1st, or as needed due to high outside temperatures. Medical care providers must identify offenders who may be susceptible to heat-related illness due to a medical condition. These offenders are placed on the medical heat restriction list, and this list is updated daily to help you identify these offenders. The list is provided to officers assigned to housing areas so that these offenders can be closely monitored during periods of extreme temperature. When you receive new offenders at the unit, who may be heat sensitive, pay close attention to them and seek care if they are exhibiting any signs of heat related illness. And during normal security checks, conduct wellness checks on all offenders and seek care for those who request medical assistance. During hot weather, offenders must be allowed to access respite areas. Respite areas may also be used by staff as needed. If an offender notifies you of a heat related illness, notify medical staff immediately and provide them immediate access to a respite area. Offenders in respite areas must remain under direct supervision. In offender housing areas, water and cups must always be available. Each offender should have a cup. If the offender does not have a cup, the unit's food service department must provide one. Allow offenders to wear t-shirts and shorts in day rooms and recreational areas. And ensure posters are prominently displayed in housing and common areas to remind offenders the importance of water intake and heat-related illness prevention. Make sure that offenders have access to cold water showers and permit additional showers when security staff is available. Water temperature will be lowered for single temperature showers. When using fans, see that they are placed in a way that draws air through the building and exhausts its outside, while taking advantage of the fresh air exchange system, air blowers, or prevailing winds. Make sure ribbons are attached to vents to provide visual evidence that vents and blowers are properly working, and keep window screens clean so airflow is not restricted. All offenders may purchase a fan from the unit commissary if they don't already have one. Indigent offenders will be issued a permanent fan on a first-come, first-served basis, but offenders who have been identified by medical staff as being susceptible to heat-related illness must be given priority. During extreme temperature periods, offender fans must not be confiscated due to property restrictions unless they have been altered or stolen. Fans are allowed in all custody levels, including administrative segregation and regardless of disciplinary status. These offenders must have their fans reissued during high temperature periods. Now, we've gone over the symptoms and treatment, and all this information is available on your employee information card. Just remember, it's important to make sure you, your co-workers, and the offenders who work in extreme heat, in the field, industry areas, maintenance, or in yard squads are getting enough water. Schedule frequent water breaks, coordinate with your maintenance and food service departments to provide additional water and ice to employees and offenders in hot work areas. And remember, Offenders in all custody levels can purchase fans, cooling towels, electrolyte sport drinks, and sunscreen from the unit commissary. This includes administrative segregation offenders. In addition to precautions at the unit, TDCJ takes the following precautions when it comes to transportation. When possible, offenders should be transported during the coolest hours of the day. The use of air-conditioned buses for transporting offenders should be prioritized according to their medical conditions. Psychiatric inpatient offenders may only be transported via air-conditioned transfer vehicles. Offenders are allowed to take fans when they are being transported off the unit for a medical appointment. Transfer officers must review the roster and check for any offenders identified as heat sensitive so they can closely monitor these offenders for signs of heat related illness. Water coolers on transfer vehicles must be refilled. To make sure that cool drinking water is available during the entire trip, cups must be available for offenders. And paper towels should be kept on hand so they can be soaked with water and used as a cooling compress if necessary. Security is the first priority at every back gate, but remember that heat-related issues may occur 
when an occupied transfer vehicle is stationary for any length of time. Buses and other transfer vehicles may circle the perimeter or use a fan to cool the vehicle during these waiting periods. All reasonable efforts must be made to ensure transfer vehicles enter and exit the back gate in a safe, secure, and expedient manner. Always load and unload transfer vehicles as quickly as possible. The following precautions apply to offenders arriving at intake facilities. As each offender arrives on an intake facility, medical staff will conduct an initial screening to determine if the offender has any medical conditions or is taking medication that would make them more susceptible to heat-related illness. Correctional staff must be informed of these offenders, who will be temporarily placed on the wellness checklist until a full medical examination can be conducted. Medical staff must ensure that all HSM-18 medical restrictions on the IMF medical screen or HSIN sensitive medical restrictions are current to reflect the heat sensitivity of the offender. This will help to facilitate the appropriate methods of transportation and housing assignments for each offender. This includes, but isn't limited to, those offenders on psychotropic medications. To all of you, stay hydrated. Watch for symptoms in yourself and others and take immediate action if someone is suffering from heat-related illness.